Okay, so we have about 10 minutes for Q&A. We have all four Quick Talk speakers with us, so they're going to come out and just grab a seat each. So please, grab a mic. Uh, let us know, let them know what's on your minds. And uh, I was about to say, let's go, but we're... <laughs> okay, there we go. Now let's go. I don't think, can you yeah. there we go. Jace, if you would, re oh, we got it now. Hello. So um, you're creating this wonderful uh, uh, environment to disrupt or transform the existing bond creation marketplace. Uh, are you using blockchain and other technologies to do so? And can you help us out a little bit with your yes. insight on that? Very good question, and yes. Um, we don't use the word disrupt in the neighborly office in the headquarters in 16 Maid Lane in downtown San Francisco, the former office of AngelList, which is funny because we fancy ourselves the AngelList of public finance. Uh, we have engineers doing things with blockchain, um, especially around collapsing the cost structure of the clearing process, which turns out to be the invisible um, thing upon which the uh, a large amount of the explanation of why it's a $5,000 denomination and more importantly a $25 to $100,000 minimum order size to access primary in today's world uh, it rests upon the fact that you know in equity you saw a collapsing of the cost structure of clearing you know from dollars in the early 90s that enabled the E-Trades and Scott Trades to you know tens of cents in the early aughts to fractions of a penny today, which enables the zero dollar stock trading of Robinhood. Uh, that didn't happen in fixed income and it certainly didn't happen in unis. Uh, it's still you know, tens of dollars to do work on a, on a muni trade uh, for now. Blockchain is a very important part of the collapsing of, of the cost structure. But we don't use disrupt, we use empower. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Other questions from the audience? This will probably be the only time you get these four speakers in one stage to ask questions. Speechless. There we go. All right. Um, hi, I'm Courtney. I'm a business school student here. I was wondering what you're on a day-to-day -day basis. What is the biggest challenge you face in keeping your enterprises up and running? <laughs> I'll go. So time is not your friend. And you have to think really, really carefully about what you want to do, right? I can tell you I work seven days a week. I can tell you I work more than 12 hours often. And um, I'm not going to burn out. So choosing what you want to spend time on and with whom is actually really important. So planning that time to make sure, right? Because what can happen is, and I'm sure we've all seen it, that, oh, we, we get caught in, you know, putting out this fire. And it's like, oh, okay, suddenly that's like two weeks of burn time when we had a pitch coming up or something else that's delayed on release. And it's like, you've got to be really focused. And certainly from a leadership point of view, you're responsible for guiding everyone. You're responsible for setting the tone. And I love how you say, we're not disrupting, we're empowering. You're responsible for leading that team in terms of here's how we're being empowered, here's how we're going to manage a list that's way too long and there's not enough time and everybody's going to be happy about doing it and we're going to get stuff done regardless. So be fierce about what your time is and be fierce about what you choose to do and where you choose to get. I completely agree with you <laughs> on that. And uh, for us, the biggest challenge right now is to, to open the door. Uh, since the municipalities and the cities are our biggest client and somebody that we need to work uh, hand to hand, uh, it's really hard to, to reach the right person to, 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 to get your email. If you, even if you find an email of the right person, it's really hard that that person uh, re see your email, reply to that email. So we are trying to attend as many conferences to try to network, to try to get uh, media exposure wherever we can. Because when you do something, when you are doing something new, you have to not just to to inform people, but you have to educate them. To and so any opportunity that uh, where we can present our product and our company, we are we are very grateful for that. So even today, that we are really happy that we are here today. So 
for us, right now, the biggest challenge, as I said, is to open the door and to get the right person to know about us. And we are doing a very hard to, to, to overcome that issue. Um, yeah, I agree with that. I would say prioritizing is really hard, uh, especially because there is so many different opportunities in so many different directions. It can get really confusing. Um, so definitely prioritizing and, and staying focused is, is, uh, is a big deal. And a lot of times I find myself reminding that myself that uh, that's, what, that's my job. <laughs> um, and uh, other than that, I think uh, something that is very much required definitely for our business uh, is a, a lot of uh, long-term thinking and vision and a lot of patience understanding what are the small steps that uh, it's okay that they are taking time uh, to happen uh, because they all eventually lead to something that's getting bigger and getting more traction um, and not expecting uh, to have uh, very immediate results on each and every action that you take. And for some members of the team it can be frustrating sometimes, so a lot of uh, our job is to actually show them how it actually fits perfectly into the long-term vision and we need patience and, know, and you know, creating something big takes time. Especially a thing built to do well by doing good. Yes. It's very easy to right. go make money in a lot of ways. Um, it's much harder and requires a tremendous amount of brain power and, and, and patience, as you said, uh, you know, to build something that's everlasting, that provides clear and significant, not only financial return, but also, you know, global good return. And I would have to echo Eileen. Uh, we know each other from two years ago. We went through uh, 500 startups together. And I have to echo her 100% uh, that the time that it takes to do this uh, is absolutely unreal. And it's far more than you think it is. And if you're the sort of founder and you want things to happen yesterday, you have to, as you're saying, be very patient and let things happen. We were just backstage, you know, we coordinated our blue blazers and white open collar shirts and, and blue jeans and we're reminiscing on the fact that it had been two years that went by in a blink of an eye. You know, and, and I have huge respect for her because she's, you know, in addition to being like a powerful CEO, she's also, you know, building this awesome empire and she's a mother of two. You know, it's amazing that, that kind of dedication to do that. Uh, I, on the other hand, don't have kids, you know, this is my life and is I get up at 5 a.m., uh, I go, I get to the office by 7, I leave after 7, and that's true six days a week. And just keeping the, the vision through what is sometimes a slog, you know, is, it, it's easy when you're passionate about it and that you feel like you're on this mission and it must be done and somebody needs to do it and you might as well be the one, uh, but that's the big thing. I'm going to ask a question then. And uh, what we have on the stage are four really impressive leaders, but all successful ventures need great teams in addition to great leaders. So I'd like to know what you're finding out there today in terms of creating teams, building teams, hiring people today. And as social ventures, is that an advantage in what way? successful company is definitely a good team and when you're a startup, when you're starting from scratch, uh, it's really hard to, and when you don't have too much funds to, to, to pay the salaries, to, you have to find a way how to mo motivate that people to stay with you, to work with you, even when you don't have any sales, when you struggle to, from day to day business, it's really hard to, to as I said, to motivate them, but you have to find, uh, that's why it's good to have a vision. What, and to, to have a clear vision and to explain to your team what do you want to accomplish in one year, two years, three years, where we, where we are going. And I think uh, uh, we manage in our company to, to, to motivate all, 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 all our team members uh, that we are going somewhere. And we have, this is not like a, a sprint, it's a, it's a marathon, and we have to be patient, but always have to have that vision where we are going. And I, 
I, I hear you and completely agree with all of you. It's so hard to, sometimes to say motivated. There is no charging station for motivation. You have to find that in yourself. And uh, it's hard. It's, sometimes it's hard, but you have, we have to keep it up and to, to move forward. No charging station for motivation. Somebody's got to make that a T-shirt. I want. <laughs> um, but but you're you're 100 percent right. In our case, um, we were really lucky. The founding team, myself, our CTO, and our VP of Engineering, had met a few years back um, at a startup that hadn't worked out. It turned out from that that um, I got a husband and a CTO, and uh, Satish <laughs> stayed with us. We actually had worked together for a year before we started dating, so I want to caveat with that. But um, you want, well, that's important, right? Because investors will look at us and say, wait, husband, wife, team, I don't know about that. And I'm like, hi, we're both happily divorced and happily remarried. He stepped out to my teenagers. Do you have any questions? So, okay. Um, because you've got to be able to, to deal with that. And team dynamics are important because you are what you attract. And to your point, you want to show there is a vision. You want folks that will commit to you, especially in early days, right? Our VP of engineering, our UX lead, worked for us for well over a year without anything more than belief in, I see what you're doing, and I want to make this happen for you. How do you attract people to do that? Not by saying, well, you know, we don't have any money, and we can't do this, and we can't do that. You know, do you think maybe kind of you could help me, please? No, nope, nobody gets behind that. You've got to be determined in your vision. And as you're looking at potential hires, ask them why do they want to join. And if the first motivation is how much money can I make, that's probably not the right fit for an early yeah. stage venture. Um, for me, I'm, I don't care where you went to school or when you graduated. I care about how hungry are you to prove this, and how much do you believe? Right? How much do you believe in what each of us are trying to establish? And show me, show to the team how you can help us all move forward. That's, that's what we look for. I think also there's a lot of folks with a very romanticized idea about mm -hmm. startups and it's great and there's like ping pong and beer pong and all this. And it's like, no, actually, to Jace's point, um, there's a lot of hours. There's a lot of hard, unsexy work. There's a lot of rote work. And you have to find folks that are willing to commit to that and commit to the slog when we don't yet have millions of dollars in sales. And maybe we're trying to get those great introductions to folks and the emails are still kind of going out in the void, but here's what we're going to do um, regardless. And I think that there's great talent out there, but to your point, you've always got to have that vision because as leaders, if we can't motivate the folks around us, why is anybody going to want to join the team? I just want to add something. To that like persistence is really important today the example I sent an email to one city official uh, three months ago and then I sent another email please can you just confirm the receipt of this email just to, see if you, to get some reply no reply on that and I two weeks after that I sent another follow-up email no reply and, not. and right like two hours ago <laughs> I got the reply for that guy Sorry, I, I was in a traveling oh, conference yeah. and okay. let's schedule a meeting next week. <laughs> so I hope maybe somebody <laughs> tweet from here. So, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so persistence, I think you have to be, and just, as I said, keep your head up and move forward. Yeah. yeah. I uh, have to say that the, I totally resonate with everything that has been said here. I, I actually say it out front and I come to my, and my people who start working with us or consider working with us and I say, listen, you're not going to make any money here. Let's, let's start with that. If you need to make a lot of money for the next couple of years or, you know, you need to find ways to sustain yourselves, yes, you're going to get a salary, but it's not, what, it's not what it's about at all. So if that's the expectation, you should not be here. The expectation is, needs to be in, in other dimensions. And then it's a lot about that passion, definitely looking for persistency, de definitely looking for a lot of independence, extremely, extremely important independence. Come to us, tell us what you think we should do, tell us what you think you can bring to the table. And if it makes sense and it fits the vision, then go for it. Um, we were also, I think, similar to what was mentioned here before, uh, I think we, all of our hires so far have been um, people who started with us either as uh, interns or volunteers. Some of them volunteered with us for over a year 
uh, without almost any compensation until we actually got the first funds and they were the first one to get the full salary before the founders. Um, so, and we were lucky enough to, to build this group uh, here in New York City and also around the world, which is just amazing. Uh, so for me, when I need this charger of motivation, team meetings and seeing these uh, team members and how they talk about the company and what their vision for the company is, that get me totally recharged. I also want to say one important thing um, in regards to how hard it is and how hard we work and we wake up so early and you know all of that which is obviously true we have to work really hard I'm sure everyone in this room works extremely hard uh, but it's also very important and I see it more and more with time very important to know how to keep yourself going for the longer term if you run a sh if you run you know if it's a if you're preparing yourself not to run a marathon but to run a sprint, then it's not going to work. After the sprint, you're going to have to stop and give, and, and give up. So you have to prepare yourself mentally with your family, with your friends, with your apartment, with your, I don't know, whatever it is that you need to organize yourself to be able to be there for the long term. Um, and if that means to take time off when you need to take time off or to remember to do your other things that you like doing or spend time with the people that you like spending time with, then do it. As much as the guilt feelings come immediately with it, that's fine, right? Um, so that's one thing that, I, um, that is very important as you consider doing something like that, important to figure that out for yourself. Uh, four years into building Neighborly, I couldn't agree more. Uh, 5 a.m. workouts, daily morning meditation and affirmations, uh, frequent affirmations throughout the day, uh, and long hikes through the beautiful Bay Area on the weekends nice. to recharge. Because yeah. uh, it is vital to, to take care of yourself. And it is, to your question, is it a competitive advantage in recruiting? Absolutely. And it's a good filter. You can do what we're, we're saying. You you know you start with everybody's seen Simon Sinek uh, start with the why. Yeah. Simon Sinek start with the why. Anybody? A few. Simon Sinek S I N E K TED Talk 15 minutes change your life. Start with the why. Why are you doing this? Not how, not what, but why. And the why must be authentic. So you're here in this room because. In you is this, uh, the seed of an idea, something that you want to do, and you, va you value the, the concept of doing well by doing good, which is at the crux of social enterprise. And with that, uh, leading with that, communicating that, constantly echoing that over and over, you find the, the best and the brightest. And as one small example at Neighborly, you go into Neighborly HQ and, and SF and look around, and you'll very quickly realize that I'm the lowest common denominator. The, every person on that team is incredible in multiple ways. And the thing that allowed it to all come together through four years of, of what started as absolute grind uh, is starting with the why. And you know, really digging into the fact that we're doing this to you know, build a big venture that has global impact by unleashing a new era of civic innovation. Humility is That was an uh, excellent way to and the panel. I'm afraid we're out of time. Uh, please join me in thanking our panelists.